All right, happy garagers. It's after hours. Got the neighbor's car. I used to do a lot of uh, work in the driveway, but haven't so much recently. Just the way it goes sometimes. Uh, this got a, a, a misfire, and uh, when when these little engines misfire, you can really tell the the, the, the horsepower is just completely gone. I've already done the the diagnosis. Uh, I'll show you all how I did that in a bit. So the intake has to come off, which looks like an ordeal. It's, it's not as bad as you might think. Um, gonna do the boot. Gonna clean that like a lot. And here are the parts you're gonna need. So the first thing you're gonna need is your is your wife's vehicle to put all your parts on so get your wife's car and just put all your parts all over the hood I mean it doesn't matter what part it is doing cylinder heads on it goes I mean it's a nice flat surface so here's the uh, the four ignition coils now I know only one is bad but this car is like 120 or so thousand miles just do the four it is so much more peace of mind and because we're taking off the intake, you got an intake gasket. Sure, you could do it without that, but it's inexpensive. Again, not one to question. That's the, the throttle body gasket. Again, I don't like doing, hey, I guess that'll work, kind of fixes. I just like it to be fixed. Um, legitimate spark plugs. Don't go out and get the cheapos on Amazon or eBay or wherever. Like, oh, but the dealer said the spark plugs were $20 a pop. Like, these weren't that far off. I think these were like $12, $12 or so a piece. They're, they're expensive. They last 100,000 miles uh, as long as the rest of your engine is in good shape. But, yeah, they're, they're just expensive. If you go out and you get the five dollar auto zone oh the parts got the, the parts employee said that they would work just fine they're not going to work just fine you end up with problems so you just get the actual spark plugs don't have to worry about it you're going to need the uh, correct size spark plug socket so these uh, a lot of spark plugs now are are 14 millimeters or 9 sixteenths uh, if you've got an old 5 8 spark plug socket it might not fit your car if you've got an old 13 16 spark plug socket I mean you're old get your grandson to do it or something uh, I got a little magnet uh, torque wrench is a must gonna do a, a little extra there new valve cover because that one is leaking which you'll see in a moment and uh, power tools like you can do it with a ratchet but if you have power tools use power tools so i'm gonna i'm gonna set up over there i lost my microphone so it's gonna be a little different all right let's get rolling on this i'm gonna start by disconnecting the battery negative first always negative first i suppose there are a few exceptions follow a repair manual but i 99 times out of 10, it's going to be negative first. It's start, I should have cleaned it before that. You can clean these before you remove them. There we go. Uh, my first plan of attack is going to be the intake hose. I had this apart um, like yesterday. It was a couple days ago. So, I, I kind of know how this comes apart, but we'll, we'll see what I remember as we get into it. Oh, the very first plan, intake. Again, power tools. You don't need them, but you need them. So. 
these guys like to get stuck and they like to crack. Now is the time to WD-40 them. Hit them with some WD-40 before you try to break them loose. And like I said, a couple days ago I had this apart, so it should come right off. And there you have it. Intake off. Check. Or the boot anyway. What are you talking about? So the very next thing I'm going to do is pull off the throttle body. And uh, I'll lift my camera uh, as soon as I get the right socket and then uh, I'll show you I'll show you why the throttle body comes off on this particular car. And if there's like a gasket surface, just go ahead when you're doing these jobs, buy the gasket for whatever you gotta remove. It's one of the situations, like you might not need it, but uh, Murphy's Law, if, if, you, if you don't have it, you're gonna need it. So I'd rather, I'd rather have it and not need it than they need it and not have it. Oh, my little speedy ratchet would be nice. I think I have one left. So I'm not going to remove this from the car. I just want it out of the way. That's, that's what uh, doing things effectively is all about. Sometimes you don't, you don't need to remove everything. Release coolant or unplug connectors. Sometimes things can move. And as long as you're not putting a lot of stress on, on hoses and, and wires, that's fine. You will you'll be just fine. Hopefully this doesn't take too long to remove. I guess we'll see when... Uh, I'm done pulling this apart and I start doing those jump cuts and pauses and whatnot. So, let me uh, free that up. You see, they won't, that won't come off that easy. I promise you. Um, little pliers to move the clamp. Uh, some WD-40 on the hose. And ever so gingerly, with a pocket screwdriver, I mean ever so gingerly, I get up in that area where it's kind of stuck you want to go straight in line with this uh, this output this nipple in line with it straight down you gotta just just push straight down be patient go a little bit at a time squeezing this with a tool it's probably gonna break it Pro you might get lucky but it's probably gonna break it All right, I'm going to pause and, and move the camera to show you all the bolts. So here's all the bolts for this 2012 Sentra with the 2 liter. You know, the, the every person car. The I just need a car to get me places car. So you have five down here. Attaching the the intake to the cylinder head. So one is kind of up under this bracket. You can't see it with my camera, but you can see it uh, with an extension and a 10 millimeter socket. So there's five. One, two, three, four, five. Right there. And that's attaching 
the intake to the cylinder head on the front. You have another 10 millimeter back here. You don't have to remove both of these. Just that 10 millimeter will do. And the reason for removing or or at least gaining access. Now you can see I can move this throttle body a good bit. I'm not pulling any wires. It can just move out of the way and now you can get to that last 10 millimeter. You can't reach that because look the throttle is in the way. So that 10, mil 10 millimeter there you can reach that now. The throttle body out of the way with just a regular 10 millimeter short socket and a ratchet. So I am going to get everything exposed there and I'll do more I guess. Alright, we got the government flying overhead in their little plane. Uh, so in order to get the intake from there to over there, you do have to now, you could pull it all the way out if you like, but a lot of guys don't like doing that. So, uh, I just I just pulled the dipstick out about yay much, which is, uh, I don't know, three, four inches. Just in order for enough flexibility that I was able to carefully pull this back and the intake came out. Uh, I didn't remove that hose. Uh, mainly because I I don't want my intake to go anywhere else but over here and once again See not like a whole lot of stress in the hose. It's just it's gonna be fine right there Now a little trick To unplugging these With a pretty high success rate not like you're never gonna break them but we all know these are fragile. Uh, you can usually feel if it's about as flexible as a saltine cracker. And uh, that's, that's exactly how these ones feel. So the, the secret is to push it in a little bit. Give it a little push inward. Maybe even just give it a little wiggle to make sure the seal is loose. So give it a little push inward before pressing on the lock. And then with the lock depressed, try bringing it outward. Again, no way is perfect. If it's going to break, it's going to break. But disconnection using that method has a pretty high success rate. So I'm just going to get my 10 millimeter on my power tool. I'm, I'm just going to use my power tool to bring these out. It just makes it much faster for disassembly and because and I'll show you on the new cover because these cars have a plastic valve cover it's got these little brass inserts uh, bringing them, removing the, the fasteners with a power tool probably won't screw it up, uh, but you probably will screw up these if you jam the fastener in with a power tool. Alright, a bunch of work done as you can see. The coils are out, the, the spark plugs are out. So, this is a trick I learned a long time ago, and there are tools you can buy that that will uh, start spark plugs for you. Maybe you've seen them, maybe you haven't. Uh, but the, the problem with those tools is they cost money. That's, that's the main issue with the spark plug installation tools. So I, I learned this a long time ago. Let's grab the old plug. How about that? So hopefully my light is suitable. It's probably better. So all you need is a hose. And not just a hose. The hose has to fit over the end of the spark plug like so and you could also definitely uh, once you've 
loosen the spark plug with your wrench, uh, you could use jam this hose on there and, and uh, pick it up if you don't have a magnet tool. So there it is. That's the uh, the free hose, and I'll, I'll demonstrate how that works. The starting the spark plugs, because also these you can't see these plugs are very small. It's a nine sixteenths plug, so that's a that's a very small shank, easy to break, easy to cross thread. But with the hose, you will not. It will bottom itself out. So I'll just get it started in there. You don't have to drop the plug in. You can hold the plug and it won't cross thread. It's impo like it's impossible. You would have to get a super small hose fit onto the spark plug in order to cross thread it. So there you go. I can feel the hose now spinning on the spark plug. I pull it out and that spark plug is ready to torque. So I'm going to wrap that up. I'm going to put the new coils on, get this back together and running. And that will be that for the night. Happy garaging, everyone.